It is time, once again, to lock your doors, shut your windows, strap yourself into your favorite comfy chair, and tune out and tune into The Naked Zombie. And yes, it's time once again to get your kit off and get naked with the zombie. I'm your host, Brad Scott, and you are listening to the best in Australian paranormal pop culture radio show, The Naked Zombie. And joining me tonight, sitting in the cardboard box, as ever, the lovely, the delightful, and the goddamn sexy Peter Wadsworth. G'day, Wadsy. How are you, mate? I'm good, buddy. Good. good, good. How, how's it all going? Are you have a good week so far? Yeah, it's been good so far, yes. One yes. day of it. One day of it, yes. yes. I've, I've had a few days off now. So how, how was the uh, the nuptials? The nuptials, my mate's wedding. It, it was absolutely it was very nice. I had I, a fantastic... Took, it took us three days to get there and took us one day to get back. So it was... Is that um, because you really didn't want to go? And then you couldn't no, wait to get out of the place? No, I just wanted to get home. Mm. It was a lot. My butt was really sore after sitting in my car for ten well, hours. You're doing it the wrong way. I know, I should have been standing on my head while driving. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, yes. I saw the photos. Photos of the wedding? Did well, I, you, of I, you. I, I you look, look pretty smart, mate. You look you're pretty, pretty yeah, schmick. Spiffy, didn't I? You I was, scrub up okay. I ooze. Yeah, you're going to do me. That's what I oozed. Yeah. Tears of my wife looked absolutely fantastic. I just saw one shot of her. Yeah. She's small. I didn't realise how small she was. Oh, she's so little. She's tiny. Yeah, she, yeah. she's very petite, young, petite young lady, but I was very lucky in that department because she married someone with really long legs. That's the only reason why she married me, eh? What? Because i got long arms and I can reach up in high places. I thought it was because she could wear high heels. Yeah, that too. But the funny story is when I went to get suited up for the wedding, the, the lady who suited me up said, my God, you have freak arms. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, lovely, I have freak arms. Because they're like that two inches too long yep. for my body. You know, I mean, I've, I'm fairly tall and lanky, but they're just like really weird because yeah. they that, that extra length in them. Look, have a look, see? That's a fair forearm. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. mutated, So if you it? put your arms out, is that your height or is that longer? Or no Longer, actually. Is it? Yeah, I'm a mutant. You are a freak. I am a freak. Yes. There you go. I'm a freak and everyone loves a freak. Uh, anyway, listen, uh, Andrew can't join us tonight because he has, um, he has other things happening in his life. A life. Yeah, he has a lot. <laughs> That's right. He didn't come and do the show with us tonight because he is stuck at home, which is fine. But we're going to try and ring him a bit later on today. Actually, we might um, we might try and give him a call now. Do you reckon he'll be awake? I, I hope so. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll just pull his details up here and see if I can get him because he won't know this phone number at all. Let's have a look. Let's have a look for Andrew. This is where we play our own music. This Bow, wow, wow, wow. No, no, hang on. Um, wait, wait, hang on. Let's see if I can... Oh, bugger. Hang on. I can never work this bloody thing out. What? It's a phone, Brad. Oh, bite you me. Dial the numbers and say hello. Yeah, all right. Good one. Um, okay, what I want is I'm using the old magic Skype here, and I'll see if I can get the mobile number work. So it's... Uh-huh. Oh shit, three, four, three, five, one, eight, nine. Oh, let's see if this works. It's ringing. I bet you I get somebody else by mistake. Yeah, I bet you do. Or we go to his message bank. I, I bet you go straight to his message bank. Oh, it's ringing. Backfire. And uh, <laughs> oh, right, we tried to um there you go, we just tried to ring Andrew and we had no success. It was just an absolute mess. Yes. Yes, that's right. Anyway, we'll try. He'll probably bring it back later and we'll have to make fun of him. Um, Anyway, I guess I've got some news for you tonight. You have? A few bits of newses. Look, four bits of newses. I think it makes Mm -hmm. sense. Okay, first things first off, I have specially pre-ordered a T-shirt. 
It's going to be one-off only. One T-shirt, one-off? One-off only, extra large design uh, with, you know, naked zombie radio. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to, it's, it's going to arrive here in about 10 days. It's yep. one-off, cost me a packet. Because it's of. a one bloody off. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to sign this shirt. Yep. And we're going to auction it on eBay. Ooh. Because that's what we're going to do. So it's an extra large. So keep an eye out, people, if you listen to the show right now. We are going to auction off this really cool T-shirt. Well, eBay are going to auction it. We're just going to put it on there. We're just going to put it on eBay yeah. and we're going to see if we can at least get a dollar for it. Well, I reckon we get a dollar fifty. I'll pay a dollar fifty for it. Yeah, you would too. Yeah, that'd be right. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, so I'll, that's put, kind of, I'll put a bit on no, now. Dollar fifty. It's not, not up yet. I will let people know when it's up. Can on Can I eBay. pay in advance? No, you can't because I haven't put it up yet. And I don't want people to start bidding on something I don't have because <laughs> that's just really, really sad. Well, all you have to do is pay the winner's bet bid back, and everyone else doesn't know. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's not going to work. Anyway, <laughs> also, I'm in the process of setting up the merchandise shop, which is a naked zombie shop. As well, so people at the at this stage look because we're on a very very tight budget of zero of zero. We are. <laughs> I've gone and spent some coin, and I've actually ordered a heap. So, uh, These now, are different shirts again. The budget's now overdrawn. The budget is well and truly gone. I yep. don't have a budget anymore. <laughs> it's just like I just got weird looks tonight off the my other half going. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually setting up the. It's just going to be like small amounts of shirts first, then we'll go into hats and other yep. things as well. But just in the process of finishing up the design uh, for the shirts, you've seen the design. I have. It looks very sexy. It looks very sexy. Now the shirt we're auctioning is totally different from the shirts. Yes. That totally different. So don't be confused at all because totally different colour, totally different design. I mean, this shirt we're going to auction off on eBay is a one-off. Correct. It, we're, we're not making any more, and it's only going to be signed. The once. Yes, because we only write our names once. Once, because we have trouble spelling. Yeah. So that's going to come up. So if people are interested, keep an eye out for it. I'll put it out on the Facebook fan site, which is just going gangbusters. Yep. So I'm really... 4,600 and... No, 4,500 something. Yeah, something 50, like that. Yeah. Whatever. whatever it is, it's absolutely fantastic. So, um, go, look, don't forget, if you're friends and you listen to the show and you want to share the Naked Zombie Love around, tell your friends about us. Yes. Because that would be awesome. Free tell ab- your friends. Free advertising. They don't have to say anything. No, it's free to listen to the show. It's free. They just say, yeah. hey, I know a great radio show. I think you should listen to it because you like that sort of thing. And here you go. That Very works, doesn't it? It anyway, does. Also, we're going to do the news tonight, was he? Well, you started it. I did. I started. I thought I'd mention a few bits and pieces first before the show and, yeah, put your eyes on your old gear. Yeah, sorry. Yo. You want yours as well? Yours are over here. Hang on. Yeah, here my we glasses go. are here too. I here should put go. them on. Hang on. Hang on. One more. My false Do you want your grandfather hat? Oh, you've got your grandfather hat on as well. That's not cool. I got told I look like a hipster today. You know, I wear that and I get told I look like Andy Cap. Andy Cap. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so just no, before we. Plural. So, first bit of news tonight. I think everyone will be quite interested about this. Um, I read in online today that eBay, right, is on the 1st of September, is going to stop anything to do with the metaphysical, spiritual, uh, haunted items, like you've got a haunted doll, you want to sell it, they're stopping that. They're actually taking the metaphysical out altogether on the 1st of September. Now, I found that very interesting because I read something that Zach Bagans wrote about it too because mm-hmm. he didn't seem very impressed about eBay kicking that side off. Yeah. The Did they give a, uh, a reason? Or? No, no, I just got a notification that eBay are no longer be... Um, so 1st of September, you won't be able to... They're going so to all your weird it. stuff. All the weird, all the weird stuff like that. Yes. So like haunted dolls and metaphysical stuff, and you know, like all that stuff. Stuff. It'll stop you buying them. Also, you won't have to look at dolls anymore. <laughs> dolls, I love dolls. I know you do, especially the light type. Um, so <laughs> we are going to go read. This. I thought that was a bit of interesting news regarding that. That eBay have said no, you can't have it anymore. Uh, but there are other sites out there that people can sell stuff on. Is uh, that okay? The trunk of my car is a good start. <laughs> I'll pull up to your house over another the trunk. Just load it in. <laughs> load in. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> Throw yeah, you five ma- bucks and be on the road. How much do you want for a onesie? <laughs> I like to test a onesie. So we're going to do that. So, um, yeah. So there you go. Very good. So you got some news for us tonight, have you? Oh, interesting thing. Yep. Last week, or last Thursday night, we were talking to uh, Liam and yourself and yep. we talked about black eyed children. Yes. Watch the Thunderbirds. They're all black eyed. Oh, you're kidding. If you do, Google, Google the Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. They're all black eyed. 
Well, people who don't know who the Thunderbirds are, Thunderbirds were Australian. They're too young. Uh, yeah, you're, you're either you're dead or you're too young. Yeah. Um, the Thunderbirds were an Australian production. That no, they made. weren't. Yes, they were. Thunderbirds were made in Australia. You sure? I'm positive they were made in Australia. Like Brains and Mr. Tracy. You know, they're the puppets that walk yeah. around and go, oh, Brains. You oh. sure they were made in Australia? Positive. Google it. Have a look. See if I'm right. Because <laughs> I am the all knowledgeable one on all things to be knowledgeable of. The awesomeness, they call it. <sighs> I haven't researched it, so I can't uh, doubt so, you. But so you, okay, back to that. You're saying everyone in the Thunderbirds has black eyes, black jet black eyes. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Why didn't they give them pupils? Because of they were too cheap. Possibly. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll Google that. I bet you any money the Thunderbirds were produced and made in Australia. Here we go. Thunder Good. Wikipedia. So it must be right. Okay, Wikipedia. What does it say? It's still coming up. God. We got the Adelaide Thunderbirds, the netball team. No, 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 the Thunderbirds. No, but the animated. Oh, okay. Puppets, sorry. Is a British science fiction. Yep, British science fiction. Yep, made in. Series, broadcasting, blah, 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 blah. Series, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Thunderbirds, Lady Penelope, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uniform, machines. Oh, okay. Where are we? Plots. Scrolling down. This is great, right, eh? International Rescue. Yeah, Thunderbird 1, Thunderbird 2, Thunderbird 3, and Thunderbird go up 4. And to 7, yes, I no, know. No, it goes up to 5. 5? What's Thunderbird 7? Lady Penelope's, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, where are we? Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway, like I was saying. Okay, while you're looking at that, I've got some interesting news to read out regarding a world-famous singer who now happens to be Williams, Robbie Williams. Now, we all know that Robbie Williams bought this house because he loves crop circles in, in the UK because he's just into that sort of... He's a real sci-fi nut, like yep. paranormal nut. He loves the stuff. Can I just interrupt? Yep. Production commenced in September 1964 and the series premiered on UK television in, on the 30th of December 1965 in the ATM Midlands region. It doesn't say where it was produced. Oh, well, I thought it was produced in Australia, but if you know where it was produced, let us know. Yes. Because what You'll is, it out. I'm positive as Australia it was produced and made in Australia uh, for the ABC or something like that. Yeah, it was sent overseas. I don't know. Anyway, I'll keep scaring. Yeah, keep going. Anyway, uh, Williams uh, now believes that his house is haunted. Yes, I've seen this. Yeah. Okay. According to the Sun, the 36-year-old singer has become fascinated with Hollywood spooky history and believes that his <laughs> Mulholland Drive mansion has a ghost. A source said the doll can see it. It is a nickname of Bertie. Is this in Hollywood or UK? I don't know. Bertie, it's a weird... Yeah. You know Bertie was the name of one of the kings, yes? Yes, that was the nickname of, of uh, uh, King Edward. Yeah. yeah. So was you're saying? Edward? Yeah. Why are we going to the current or? Queen's mother. Yeah, yeah. Because your... I'm thinking. The Queen's mother's... No, the Queen's father. Father, yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, but uh, they believe to be a man from the beginning of the 20th century. Rob likes to imagine him in a suit holding a martini glass. I think he's had a bit too many martinis. Uh, In 2009, Williams claimed that he felt a spectral present at his UK Wilshire mansion. We had previously claimed that he had seen UFOs. Now, particularly moved to this UK address in Wiltshire. Wiltshire. Sorry, Wiltshire pronounced correctly. Wiltshire. Because it's very close to where these lot of these crop circles have been happening. Ah, yes. But now it's it's, it's also haunted. From the crop circles? I don't know, but see what money does here? It haunts you. Yes, I would be mad as half cut snake too if I had all that money. Yeah, um, well, so but there he's you worked go. for it. Hey, he's worked for it. Of course, he's worked. But look, I, don't get me wrong. I I enjoy his songs, but it's, uh, I just find it hilariously funny that uh, now his house is haunted. But he is right into the paranormal. He is. He is. I'd love to. What if we get Z- Williams on the show? You reckon it'd be interesting. That would be interesting to talk about that. Yeah, I wonder. Do you reckon he would? I don't know. Do you reckon we'll? Do you reckon send an email? We can try. Wouldn't hurt. Ah. Uh, some reason I don't think that a multi-billion dollar super rock star would have time for us. He might send us a written reply. Yeah, written reply, well, like, please don't bother me, stay away from my house. Well, at least it's a reply. Well, at least it's a reply. Anyway, as long so you don't put in, put in, in the email saying that you're low on fruit and milk. <laughs> hey, I'm not a stalker, but you're low on milk. Hey, I've, I've got another weird one for you. Yeah, well... Uh, what am I supplying all the news? Anyway, here we you're go. You're not letting me. No, I won't. Okay. You're doing such a good job at it. More ghosts after earthquake. 
the sheer strength and power of the September 4th earthquake that has more than doubled the number of reported supernatural events in Canterbury, a paranormal investigator says. Christchurch paranormal investigator founder Anton Heydrich, I know this guy, he's in New Zealand. He runs a group in New Zealand, yeah, I've okay. spoken to him, uh, said that his team have received an interesting influx of phone calls and emails after the 7.1 magnitude earthquake with more than double the unusual number of inquiries. People are calling us saying that they had always felt like there was something in the house, but since the earthquake it has become more intense, he says. Most cases related to strange noises, although one man said he had been attacked by a ghost. Hayrick said that the sheer strength and power of the earthquake may have been responsible for the increase in paranormal activity. The number of old buildings damaged in the earthquake may also have been a factor, he said. It was well known amongst investigators when renovations on old buildings took place that tends to wake up dormant spirits and actively tends to come out of nowhere, he said. With the earthquake literally smashed the walls apart and knocked down floors and ceilings, you can imagine the effect it would have had. The team did not charge for its services, had conducted two full investigations and was planning to do several more. New Zealand Skeptics Chairman uh, Gold... Chairman Gold said that the reports may have been due to people's minds playing tricks on them in the post-quake environment. You may not feel an aftershock, but you still make things rattle. People's minds fill the blanks, and they tend to fill in the blanks with fairy tales, unfortunately. Yeah, so actually, I years ago when I was hosting in New Zealand, I actually had NZ Skeptics on. Yeah? And nice, they are actually a nice bunch of people. You think everyone's nice. I do, because I'm lovely. Yeah. I'm lovely, Brad. Anyway, yeah, so I know of the, this paranormal group. Um, look, good group, yeah. Um, and I've had the Enzac Skeptics on before. And, yep. and, you know, and they were pretty pretty good, you know. But, you know, this thing is you've you got to take everything with a grain of salt nowadays, I guess, what people write up in the media and just leave it out there. Listen to me, you've got to take a grain of salt. No, you've got to take a pack of salt with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So you got some news for us yet? Yeah. Good um, stuff, go for it. Thunderbirds, ITC... Productions, yep. which is a British company. It's all British. It's, it's all British. British. Yep. Why, what do I think I was made to throw for? And that's, oh, that's, it must be the accent. That's, that's, that's all the news you should have for me now. No, I'm just uh, uh, you're following on. I was all finishing right. my story. All right, do it. An do anonymity, it. well, it's titled Extraterrestrials May Have Taught Humans. Mm-hmm. An anomaly exists regarding the appearance of modern man and evolution. Crow Magnon was on Earth for over 50,000 years Yet, he never possessed past, progressed past stone tools and the bow and arrow. Why? Because no one taught him writing, math, science, farming and astronomy. Then 7,000 to 10,000 years ago, man from other galaxies of, or solar systems began educating humans. Clay tablets from the United Kingdom and Babylon stated that people from the stars descended and taught the people. Well, there you go. I thought we had got most of our stuff on the mines and the Egyptians. Well, I thought it was from the internet, but... I don't know if they had did. Oh, they could have done. Could have done. Oh, OK, you never know. Maybe they wrote it on a net. Ah, uh, just guess what? We're back? We're, we never left. Oh, OK. OK. Stop playing the... with your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this has now been called the naked weirdness. The naked weirdness. See, because, look... Uh, yeah, we've got Seeing the... you naked is weird. <laughs> when have you saw me naked? <laughs> We do the show naked. What do you want about? Oh, that's right. That's right. I got an email about that. Yeah. So stop it. Anyway, uh, just before we go on, I've just come across this story that will literally you can't even look at the photo. No, I can't. You can't. I can't. Right. It's yeah. It, Let me explain. It this. freaks me out. Things this, like that. Okay. Construction work survives after a metal bar pierces his head. Yeah, I've, I've got a photo of it here now. You can look for it yourselves because it's pretty. It's not. It's the. It's not the actual photo. What it is, it's the actual three um, D X ray. Like they they did X ray yeah. of his head to see where the spike was, and this thing's got bits of meat hanging out of it everywhere. Uh, yeah, I just find meat fascinating. <laughs> so what it is, um, yeah, it's it's a special scan, and it's like see his skull and, and everything. You don't see, so you see, his, you know, you just see this bar sticking anyway. Uh, a twenty four year old construction worker survived after a six foot meter bar fell from above and pierced his head, the doctor said Friday. Someone didn't put their phone on silent. No, but we you know what we're going to do before we do anything. What's that? Hang on. Hang on. Hey, Brad. 
Hello, buddy. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> you know... That's right, you're on the radio too, so careful what you say. <laughs> hey, Andrew, how are you? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what were you arguing with your mummy about? Oh, oh no, he got in trouble with his mum. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, man. Look, we understand. We're, we're just grown men. We don't have those problems anymore because we've actually reached puberty. Um, no, just come to ring up to let you know, mate, we miss you. We, we're sorry you couldn't make it on the zombie tonight. This is probably very distorted because I've got it up loud. Let me just turn it down a bit. And all the blank show parts in the show is when you're supposed it's to be talking. talking. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah, no, it's... um. Sorry, I can't make it, everyone, but... You know, things suck sometimes. Because yeah, you're a wuss. <laughs> hey, um, I'm going to give you a call a bit later on because I've just told everyone out there that I've bought a heap of shirts for the zombie. Yeah, saw those. No, you haven't seen these ones yet. That's just a one-off. Oh, okay. These are proper... These are Well, the other one's a proper one, but these yeah. are like these are for the new merchandise section people, of people the zombie. don't win the... Auction. These are for the people that don't who actually just want to buy the shirt. So yeah. this is cool. These are totally different now one. So I'll let you go. Um, I'll give you a call a bit later on during the week. And yeah, do you want to say any, anything to the fans out your fans out there? Well, gotcha. Oh, jeez. My, my one fan, which is probably my mother anyway, but, yeah. You know. Not when you speak mean about her. Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know how I, I, I usually have nothing to say anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> fair enough. All right, mate, we'll, we'll let you go. We'll say a big farewell to to Andrew. Bye, Andrew. See you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. He's going to hate you. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll go trouble with my mummy. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded a bit upset. He did, didn't he? Yeah. That's right. We'll, we'll give him all big cuddles later. Yeah, exactly. Look, we'll, we'll go no, and cuddle send, him. Send, send um, young Aaron lots of cuddles. Yes. And, and thoughts. You know, send him, go to his Facebook page and just give him lots of hugs and that because I think he needs them. He does. Yeah, it, I think so. He, it, he sounded a bit upset there. He, he did, yes. yeah. Well, that's hey, young fellas. That's what you get. Anyway, where was I talking about? The thing you're looking at. Yeah, the thing I'm looking at, this picture of this huge bar going through this bloke's head. Oh, yeah, this is it's just disturbing. It, it, seriously, you can't, once you can't look at it. No. I, I can sit there and touch it all day. This is so cool. Anyway, uh, Lutz Alexandra is, is, Essinger, uh, chief it was of staff Wado. of Rio de Janeiro's. You said it was Eduardo. No, that's that's the bloke's name is Eduardo. You just Eduardo. read the punchline for me. Which is? Eduardo. Eduardo. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh because the hospital said doctors successfully withdrew the iron bar from Eduardo's skull. During the five-hour surgery, he was taken to the operating room. His skull was opened. They examined the brain, and the surgeon decided to pull the bar out from the front in the same direction it entered the brain. So this thing is literally six feet long. So he's only got 10 centimetres sticking out of the front of his head. So okay, he's got It's another, not six feet long. Okay? It's not six feet it's long. It's six-foot metal bar. Far Six out. Foot. There's 10 centimetres sticking out of his head, and they drag this thing another five and a half something feet. I hope they gave him a shot of whiskey before oh, it. they did that. Oh. Anyway, so, yeah, into the brain. As, uh, he said uh, El Eduardo was conscious when he arrived to the hospital and told him what had happened. He said El Eduardo was uh, lucid and showed no negative consequences so after hang on, the operation. Hang on. This guy was conscious, so he's walking down the street with a bar sticking out of his head. Bar sticking out of head. He walked into the hospital and says, "Can no, you no, fix no. this?" No, he wasn't. He didn't walk it. I'm sure he was like wheeled in. Um, well, five hour operation. No, so like, everything's okay. Uh, today he continues well with a few complaints for well, a five a major hour headache. Compl- yeah, I uh, said he says he feels a little pain. A little pain. Eduardo feels no pain. Eduardo is just too cool. A little pain. A little pain. And yeah. this is it gets better. The bar fell from the fifth floor of a building under construction, went through the Waddles. Hard hat entered the back of his skull and extended between his eyes. So that's it. That's Hard hats. Really, hey? Hard hats. If something's fallen on you, 
The hard hat's wearing you for safety. Mate, it, it was attached to a hard hat. That's a problem. <laughs> That's why I stopped it. Uh, the surgery the accident took place on Wednesday. Uh, they told me he was laying down in the ambulance with a bar um, pointing upwards. He had to be on a slight angle. Dr. Waddell's wife, Lillian uh, Kasasa, was holding... Holding and it is well. Basically, he was holding his face. It was covered in blood. Uh, took uh, he looked like as nothing had happened when he arrived. He told doctors he wasn't feeling any pain, no pain, nothing. It was unbelievable. Uh, Ray Monetero, the hospital's head of neurosurgery, told the Gublo, that's what it says, Gublo, uh, TV network that Eduardo escaped just by a few centimeters from losing one eye and becoming paralyzed of the left side of his body. He said it entered through a non, uh, like a non, uh, el equivalent, which is basically like the part of the brain that doesn't do much. That's, so he's that's my whole brain. Okay. Uh, he's he's going to be in hospital for about two weeks. That's my whole brain, the part that doesn't do much. Yeah. yeah. Hey, if he doesn't feel any pain. No, he didn't feel any pain. Does that mean the brain doesn't feel pain? Well, I don't it know. It just senses brain from the nerves? So if anyone's curi- curious, if they'd like to go and check out construction worker survives after a metal bar pierces his head Or just in search Brazil. Eduardo and Eduardo. scroll through all the Brad, Brad pictures oh, and then you'll God. find... This is pretty horrific, this thing. You see it? Have a look. I am looking at it. You're going to make your bar for a minute. You, you just don't get that reflex action. No, I'm just it. thinking... He just didn't, Look, want, see, he just didn't want to go to the pub, so he decided to carry a bar Look. around with him. Look, meat. <laughs> it's a black and white photo. No, it's not a black and white photo. I'm coming around. Hang All on. Right, hang on. He's got to come around and have a look at it. You watch him hurl. <laughs> Look, see? Meat. See that? Yep. See the meat? See how it's producing the skull out? Sure and it's that's, not just blood. No, it's your blood. No, it's actually, there's more meat. See, it's it's, and they drag that thing out. So check it out, folks. If you go and see it, and they actually removed this thing. I'm doing a visual here for radio. They grabbed and pulled it out lengthwise. Yeah, six foot. That's incredible. That's uh, my sure height. Surely they would have chopped it off, mate. How could they chop it off? Grinder. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that wasn't feeling any pain? No, it was pretty gross, wasn't it? So you got anything for me over on your side of the world? On my side of the world? Because we've got one more story before we go to an ad break. All right. <laughs> the what? Walk into the weakness. Before we go to what? Ad break. Oh, okay, sorry. Ad break. Remember 1995? Yes, I do, vividly. A Netscape was a browser. Yes. Yahoo was a search engine, and Facebook didn't exist. No. The kids, in this public service announcement, this is a video that mm. you can go find, so it was just in fifth grade when they made this video about the internet. But they successfully predicted that we'd soon be doing just about everything on the web. Shopping, chatting, watching TV. Oh, and cats, you can find recipes for how your cats... Taste with a bit of pasta <laughs> sauce. Find recipes for your cats on the internet. Now, no, what's the very... for cats That's or what for said. your cat? No, recipes for your oh. cats. You seen juicy? Yeah. Oh, no, 27 black bean sauce. <laughs> <laughs> now, watch the video and feel very, very old. Mm. So, 1995, no, no, these kids were predicting that we would be shopping, chatting mm-hmm. and watching TV... On the internet. Oh, I thought my story was more grosser. That wasn't supposed to be gross. <laughs> it was supposed to freak you out and say, "We're old." Hey, isn't it, no, isn't it glad that I have all the all, all the um, all the cool stuff? Oh, guess what? What? Did you know our mate William Shatner? Yeah. Well, we'll do one more story before we do an ad break. William okay. Shatner, you know the you know Captain Spock. Kirk. No, not Spock. Oh God. William Sh- oh, Kirk, sorry, Kirk, yeah, Kirk. sorry. Yeah, it was Leonard Captain. Nimoy yeah. who played Spock. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, uh, sorry, I'm just flabbergasted. Uh, okay. You're just all flabber. William Shatner and his... Or is it flubber? Uh, what? Go Flab- on. Oh, God, please stop. Just. just. Anyway, uh, the book Captain Quirk, uh, sorry, Quirk, a fairly hostile, unauthorised biography of William Shatner who played Captain Kirk in the television series Star Trek, written by someone who got to know him personally while they worked on a documentary together, reported that Shatner had a bizarre UFO experience while riding his motorcycle with friends in the Mojave Desert. Mm. Mm. Supposedly Shatner's bike stopped working uh, properly. He crashed and because he was disorientated... And his friends mysteriously lost track of him. Where are my friends? I crashed my bike. Oh, look, there is a UFO. You didn't go Stargate. There. I'm just doing my William Shatner impersonation. That's yeah, but you can go Stardate. Stardate 2714. 
I ride my bike across the Mojave Desert. So that's it. That's it. Like, that was good? No, anyway. No, okay. No. Uh, I'll do that. Anyway, uh, Shatner claimed that some kind of shadow apparition beckoned him to the edge of the horizon. He followed the apparition for hours, <laughs> uh, eventually arriving at the petrol station where Shatner claimed that he saw a silvery metallic disc hovering overhead. Shortly after the incident, Shatner released a musical album, The Transformed Man, containing cover versions of the well-known spacey songs such as Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Hang on, Will- William Shatner sings? Well, I, this is this is William Shatner singing, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Yeah, that yeah, was a big yeah. hit. I can see that. Lucy in the, tri- in the sky with diamonds. I can see that in the Triple J Top One Hundred. Oh, yeah. uh, some alleged that uh, the album was inspired by the Alien Count, or even the album itself co- constituted constituted a message from Shatner to the aliens, indicating that he had got it. Shatner, during the interview, would later deny that the incident, saying he was trying to get off get rid of the rumours. Some sort of believe that he is lying so people don't think he's crazy due to the body language during the interview. It is reported he mentioned the incident in his autobiography. Well, there you go. I think I should talk like this all the time for Naked Zombie Radio. No? Well, it's up to you. OK, it's... keep going. Yeah. Next. OK, are we going for a break? Oh, yes, ad break. Oh, oh, bugger, I forgot. Anyway, you are listening to The Naked Weirdness, the best in Australian paranormal <laughs> pop culture radio show, The Naked Zombie. We are host, Brad Scott and Peter Wadsworth. We're going to stop now for a quick break, and we'll be back after these short messages. So says William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop now. I'll get it. Dude, dig the zombie motif. <laughs> Dude, you're going to the 2012 Zombie Walk? <laughs> We're here in Brisbane, in aid of the Brain Foundation of Australia. Dude, I'm there. Uh, by the way, can you stop chewing on me now? Sorry. That's right, zombie and zombettes, the 2012 Brisbane Zombie Walk, in aid of the Brown Foundation of Australia. Come and join us on the 21st of October 2012 at Victoria Park for a fun-filled day of fun, excitement and scaring the locals. For more details, go to www.brisbanezombiewalk.com. Are you looking for some really good equipment in your next ghost hunt? then look no further than the Go Shack, based right here in Australia. The Go Shack can offer you everything from the Mel meter, EMF detectors, cameras, illuminator, brackets, spirit box, and course voice recorders. All you got to do is go to Facebook and type in Go Shack, Go Shack. for all your paranormal needs. And that remained uncharred was the painting of the crying boy. A Yorkshire fireman was so distraught by the occurrence that he told his story to a newspaper in England. There were at the time more than one of these paintings around and each seemed to have the same effect. Perhaps copies of the painting also transferred the curse as well. The newspaper has been receiving telephone calls from people all over the area that had similar stories to tell about the crying boy painting. One person that contacted the newspaper was Dora. I won't say her surname, of Mitchum. And she had been quoted as saying, only six months after I had bought the, pi- the, m- bought the picture, my house was completely gutted by fire. All my paintings were destroyed, except for the one of the crying boy. Oh, that's just odd. After one month of hearing all the tales, the newspaper gave the readers a chance to bring their crying paint boy paintings and ha- have a large bonfire to destroy them. All the paintings were brought to the event were burned. No one knows for sure where the paintings originated from or who the artist might be. But it can be but it can't be just coincidence that forty to fifty similar cases occurred in the same time period. So, so all these people had this pictures of the crime if so folks out there, if you've got a picture of a crime boy hanging up on your wall just a, keep an eye on the bugger. The picture itself was a portrait painted by a Spanish artist of an orphan that was mass-produced in the UK with several thousand in circulation. It is said that the artist's studio burnt to the ground and the boy was later killed in a car crash. Oh, wonderful. It is said the curse was, will only affect some if the owner of the painter becomes aware of it. 
owner of the painting comes to be aware of it. Some psychics have claimed the painting is haunted by the spirit of the boy it depicts. That is pretty creepy, dude. Mm-hmm. That, that is good. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I've got to get me into heavy jeans. And if you look at it... Yeah. Hang on, I'm going to have a look. No, if you look at it, he's got black eyes. He does... Seriously, he has too. Mm. That's awesome. This is really freaking me out, these black eye oh, things. I'm looking so. for them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's just weird. You know, I've just had a look at that picture. I think that was more disturbing the guy with a pole through his head. Oh. Uh, hey, guess what? You know how some time ago that they had that Bigfoot hoax, those two Muppets who... Uh, what, only one? Well, oh, there's two Muppets. No, I mean, as in only one hoax? No, there was one major hoax with the, the body in the freezer. Yep. You know, but it turned out to be a costume. Anyway, it turns out um, it gets better. And this has happened quite a while ago. Does it get better than the painting boy? The boy no, the painting not this. Boy? This is mm-hmm. just a bit of trivia for you. Okay. You know how there was rumour that, that this person paid a $250,000 for the actual body? Yep. Bigfoot in the freezer? Well, it turns out it was it was false. What, the freezer or the, or the body? The, no, the, the 250000 because that was a big thing about the story that these guys walked away with two hundred fifty thousand. Oh, okay, but turns out that was all a hoax and yada yada. Because it's one of those automatic bid things. It turns out, uh, so I don't actually got the two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, well. But that was my bit of trivia for you. That well, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but that was from our good friends at Crypto Mundo. Um, so there you go. Yes, Crypto Mundo. They're great. So you must check them out. They're friggin' awesome. Okay, how about a good um, conspiracy? Oh, I love a good conspiracy. Okay. Okay, you ready for this? What one? have we got? No mystery. Here we go. This is to do with um oh god I've, that's weird. That was really odd. I was just reading the story and next to it switched to another story, so that was just weird but I didn't touch anything. That's like Okay. Right. You know about the wow signal? The wow signal? 35 years later, humans respond to the wow signal on Twitter. No. Okay. Ready for this? Yep. Just in case aliens are that, then the universe are listening to more than 10,000 Twitter messages plus videos from celebrities, celebrities such as comedian Stephen Colbert have been beamed up into space as a big hello from Earth. The messages are intended as a response to what's called the WOW signal, an intriguing radio signal detected on August 15th, 1977. This some thought to be called from extraterrestrials. The 72-second long transmission was picked up by Big Ear Radio Observatory in Ohio, Ohio State University coming from a direction of the constellation Spatagratagus. Spatteratagus? Sounds like Snuffleupagus or yeah, Sesame does. Street. I just can't pronounce yes. all these words. Uh, because the radio signal was 30 times more powerful than the average um, radiation from deep space, a volunteer astronomer named Jerry Henman, who was watching the telescope data, scrawled WOW on the computer printout leading to the signal moniker. Uh, no evidence has ever been arrived actually linking the transmission to an alien civilization, and no repeat message from the same direction has ever been detected. And the wow signal remains a mystery. Now, exactly 35 years later, however, the center and the mission may be getting a response. A project directed by the National Geographic Channel and Arigabo Observatory <laughs> beamed a package of digital information out of the heavens on Wednesday containing Twitter messages from the public submitting via the hashtag chasing. UFOs, as well as videos from celebrities such as Stephen Colbert, Gorge Garcia, Lila Loops, uh, Lopez, Lila Lopez, and the 2011 Miss Universe. Uh, greetings, intelligent alien life forms. I am Stephen Cobalt, and I come with you with an important message on behalf of the people of Earth. The comedian says in his video, "We are not delicious. In fact, we're kind of gamey, and we suck in, and we get stuck in your teeth. <laughs> it's really embarrassing at a job interview if." you want something good and you're too much on a nearby crab nebula and bring a bib seriously all you can eat oh god it's not even funny uh, the event was timed on to coincide with the premiere of the channel's new series chasing ufos which documents and debunks myths and extraterrestrials and ufos we talked about this a couple of weeks ago they're not too happy with the hell the series is going Aren't they? Chasing UFOs, yeah. Yeah, yeah look it up. Can't find enough? No, not that can't find it. It's the way it's been put together. Like the, the, the key people in it. Just for okay. the bit aren't real keen about how it's been put together and how it's making them look. But that's 
That's you want to be on TV, that's what you get. Exactly. I'm going to speak about TV in a minute. I've got to finish this off. In particular, each message will have to repeat in sequence head attached to what you're uh, represent now. That means they're intentional and from another intelligent life form. Additionally, the transmitter used yields a signal roughly 20 times stronger than the most powerful commercial radio transmitter. Now, speaking of TV. Yeah, go on, let it spill. What do you got? You know how much I do not like the Shire. There's nothing wrong with the Shire. It's on TV. That's right. It's not good. Seriously. I oh, know. Look, you know, I'm going to get myself in trouble here one day because how much oh, I I'm, sh- like I'm it. sure you're not the only one who doesn't like it. Oh, look, yeah. Well, anyway, look. If you haven't seen it, don't. Uh, cause it's not. <laughs> worth it. But oh, I haven't watched it. But anyway, they had on the. You must see this on the news. Like two of the leading girls on the yep. Shire on the TV series, they got into a, a cat fight. Scrag fight. In, Broad daylight outside a restaurant or cafe yep. with another two girls, and you saw, you saw the, the yep. news. They were pulling, pulling each other's yep. hair and they're grabbing each other's pants, and and this went on for ages. And people just walking around going, "Oh, they must be from the Shire. That yes. must be all right then." But seriously, these four women in their early twenties, one had a butter knife and was going to stab the other one. Yep, I'm waving my arms around like I've got a imaginary knife in my hand oh, stabbing Brad, you. Don't. Don't yeah, stab me, Brad. That. Please yeah. don't, Brad. Yeah, let me don't, call here. Don't. But half the problem is they reckon it was also staged. They, I heard that it was, they thought it was staged. But, I mean, whether you, yeah, like yeah. It, whether you like it or hate the show, these people are actors just doing a job. Yeah, but they're not, they're not meant to be actors. But they are. They, of course they're bloody actors. And just because they're on TV, but what gives you the right crap. to go around and stab them? No, seriously. I mean, the person absolute... was probably on crack anyway and trying to get money. No, they, they weren't. They were just... Does some fight start? Oh, I mean, this is what I t- is this the level that yeah. Australian TV has sunk to? Oh, of course. If if it's a publicity stunt, yes. It's just rubbish. If I mean, it, yeah. I'm getting on my high horse again. I, I really have an issue with. Well, I know there's a lot of crap out there on TV. Yeah, there's a lot of crap out there on radio, like we're one of them. Yeah. But yeah. but we, we we don't claim to be anything else but crap. No, exactly. <laughs> we we're are proud the of it. Yes, crappy show you can ever make. And we're yeah. proud of it. Yeah, we're proud of it because that's why we have we, we have, everyone sort of doesn't like listen to us. Yes. But the point being, have the have Australian producers gone? I've left my brain in my ass. Let's produce something that's just totally rubbish and makes the rest of the country look like a bunch of idiots. I mean, this is what to me. This is what they're portraying is the fact that they've taken these young couple, young early twi- 20s, yep. right? Supposedly actors. Supposedly actors or whatever. I don't care what they are. But honestly, it's making us look like, especially that age group in that area, just that one young bird who's knocking off that old guy. I see the previews for she's like half his age. Oh, good luck to him, I reckon. That's great. But I wouldn't want to be shown on TV doing that. No, nope, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, this is, I don't know. Well, listen, I'm not trying to, if I get all riled up about it, I'm just going to waste me and I'll go to bed cranky and I'll be showing <laughs> stuff around. But I'm just disappointed that someone's been paid lots of money to produce. Yes. Absolute rubbish like that. Well... Someone must have paid them, so they must have thought there was some good ideas in it, but oh. I don't know. It, as you said, it's a standard that... Uh, oh, look, if you totally disagree with me, I love the Shire, great, send me hate mail, I couldn't give a rat. Yeah. I stand by my principles, of fact. Personally, I, it's, and it's an embarrassment to Australian television. Yep, definitely. Like, we're an embarrassment to Australian <laughs> radio, but I never claim to be anything else. So, what? Well, okay, I'm off my little soapbox now. What else you got, buddy? All right. Here we go. Um, where are we? Bring up here. After three years' extensive and exhaustive investigation, NIST, which must be some American organisation, has published their final report on the World Trade Centres, concluding that the fire caused Tower 7 to collapse. And they deducted from a series of highly complex computer models that the collapse started with the failure of just one column, column 79 on Floor 13. Is this the World Trade? Yeah. So, and this is what they... It was just, no, mate. Three, it was three like, years, and it to, took them that a fire caused it to collapse. No, a whopping big plane flying in it <laughs> caused that. I mean, bloody hell. I mean, they... Uh, I'm going to get cranky yeah. again. I mean, you know, they, they how much took, money did they waste on investigating that when they've got video footage 
of a plane, of a plane crashing into a building and a fire. Why don't they put that money into doing helping the people that were actually yeah, injured, injured and or given, doing instead of taking that sort of money, no, yeah. using that money and do put it to the people who, who I, suffered. I through agree it. totally. I mean, yeah, it's instead just of doing some investigation, I mean, a plane flew into the building. Two planes flew into the building. Two, one each, yeah. right? But the point being is, instead of waste, look, there's so much wastage out exactly. there. Exactly. Why do you have to have the investigation? The investi- plane, building, fell down. Fell down, fire. Well, people, you know, yeah. suffered horribly. And exactly. why can't they just take that information and go, all right, well, we know a plane, but let's do something with the money. Let's give it to the people who suffer. And it's no consolation for the loss. No, it does make the people come back. It doesn't make anything come back, but... It may give one of their kids or something to start off in college or or a, a, some sort of future without their parent or parents. Exactly. Or child or whatever. It gives exactly. them something to... Yeah, I don't know. There's a bit of a touchy subject there, yeah. but I just get um, friggin' annoyed when money is wasted on absolute... When it could be going towards... You know... So what they're going to do now is blame the friggin' bloke who... Who like designed the, the building who because designed the building. he didn't plan it for a plane to crash into it 50 years later. I mean, this is... Oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't it, know. It, Sorry, I'm going on the soapbox again. Yeah, no, I'll I'm join you up there, mate. I'm in a grumpy mood tonight. No, I'll join you up there with that one, mate. That's, anyway. that's just... Hey, we've only got about 15 minutes to go off the show. Have we? Yeah. Okay. We're extremely um, long tonight. And, 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 and we've rung up young Andrew. And, we and have. No, he rang us back. He did. And don't forget... Everyone, when you get on Facebook, make sure on the Naked Zombie, make sure... Hugs for Andrew. Hugs for Andrew. We expect you to write down, if you listen to the show on the Naked Zombie Facebook site... Yep. Hugs for Andrew. Hugs for Andrew, That's yes. our new cause for the week. That's it. That's it. And I think I should write a song about it and put it in him. In him. Put it in him? I'm not going to put anything in him. Stop it. No, anyway, that's what you said. All right, so no, put it in it. In it. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, okay. I can't listen to these. All right, so what else you got for me, big boy? Um, I don't want to talk about ones with videos because it's a bit hard to... Although well, you do it all the time, waving yeah, your arms around. Time. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm very good visually. Yes, you are. Uh, where are we? Open up, come on. I've got it here. Where are we? Uh, secret NASA footage reveals huge UFO activity in space. That's been around for a while, that one. Well, it's, yeah, it's always... It's, 2006, it's, is that, basically. You know, is that the one that they reckon they had this thing off one of the port windows? And it was just... But it was zigzagging back as a fraud, but nothing was no, mentioned? No, no. Many one? UFO followers will have a fascinated... We have been fascinated by a video currently on display via Google, which reveals unusual objects caught on video. Not just one or two, but hundreds in all shapes and sizes. So, obviously, I think NASA have put it against a confirmation... Of like a compliment, like a, a compliment, compliment. What's the word I'm looking for? The compliment, compli. It's like the old. Uh, they put something together in random footage and they put music in the background. Yeah. So basically, they've got the like theme. <laughs> <laughs> they've got the the theme from uh, the <laughs> Benny Hill show. Yep. Yeah, if anyone doesn't know the Benny Hill show, you're, like, you're too young, or you're dead. dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you've got that music playing in the background with UFOs darting yep. backwards and forth. I love it. Apart from the unusual images, it also interest, it's also interesting to hear conversations between space crews and NASA. Oh, yeah. On one occasion, the space crew observed some strange glittering lights. <laughs> oh, glittering lights. Oh, tinkle, tinkle. Come on, here's a go. Go, go. Yeah, uh, NASA... There appears to be something hanging off our, our starboard window. It's a mirror ball. <laughs> no, I think you'll find that was Michael Jackson's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the reply takes an unusually long time to arrive and doesn't really sound very convincing. NASA seems to suggest that the glittering lights are reflections from the clouds. Of course they are. What drugs were they on back then? It's all clouds. Uh, but oh, this is not likely, clouds. as they seem to be moving at a much the same speed as a... As the craft they are orbiting in. Oh, dear. It must be said that many of the objects seen could easily be old satellites or space debris. Chish, I wonder how many of the other stuff is old satellites or space debris. Of course, most of it's space junk anyway. Of course it is. Of course it is. Hey, here's one for you. Unless you've been annually probed, it's only space bump. So we could be an alien probed. I've got something that's right up your alley, mate. I want you to meet Squidgy. 
Squidgy, is that the one about the the, uh, te- the starfish? Yep, the, the glow, no, glow in the dark starfish. No, it's actually a glow in the dark robot. You know how much I love technology and everything that goes yeah. zzz, 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 type thing. Well, bang. meet Squidbot. Oh, Squidgy is called a, a robot that can camouflage himself. It's really cool. Uh, scientists have diverse a rubbery robot inspired by the squid and octopus, which can crawl, camouflage itself, and hide from infrared cameras. <gasps> oh, you know what I was just thinking? What? Toilet cam. Awesome. Oh, sorry, this is you're sick. Yeah. Uh, the Pentagon Sheesh. backed uh, the Sheesh. Pentagon backed <laughs> the Pentagon backed get. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm sorry. The Pentagon-backed gadget is the latest type of so-called soft machine, meaning silicon-based robots that are made from squidgy translucent polymers. Uh, The prototype incorporates a thin sheet of special silicon and a microscopic channels through which the the coloured fluids are pumped into the robot skin. You know what I'm thinking. And patterns that surround this environment. Adult toy. Well, it's just 13 centimetres long, dude. You never know. I know. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Seen I was under that one. No, yeah, you're we, right. we can retire to <laughs> the study and just drink beer. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm looking for another co-host at the moment because <laughs> he's making these funny looks at me. Anyway, so basically um, the prototype is four-legged, 13 centimetres long, limbs are sprayed out like a next full mage, compressed air flexes like a child's or yada, yada, yada. So basically they've vented this thing that can camouflage itself as a robot. When it's really an adult toy. When it's really an adult toy. Called Squidgy. Squidgy. That's even got a cute adverts? name. You see the like TV commercials for it now. I can. Feeling lonely? <laughs> <laughs> Feeling like you're not loved? Then you need to buy a Squidgy bot. Four <laughs> arms to cuddle you. <laughs> <laughs> and an extra one for. <laughs> I have to be very careful about it because. Actually, young people do listen to the show. I yes, like myself yes. from time to time. So, oh, God, we've got about 10 minutes left. So, okay. what have you got for us? For the first time in history, two yeah. planets have been discovered to, that share the same orbit. Two planets. Two planets yeah. that share the same oh, orbit. Really? That's, that's quite. The pair of planets unusual. are part of a four. <laughs> Four-planet solar system called KO-1-730. But KO-1-730? Yeah. I think it's oh, KOI, well, actually. Oh, no, KOI-730. Yeah. I visit there in my dreams a lot when I go astral travelling. Do you? No, not really. No. Keep going. They orbit a sun-like star only six degree, 60 degrees ahead of the other, with a, with a full rotation taking 9.8 days. <gasps> Gee, that's pretty... That's... 9.8 days, days, and it takes us a year to go around our sun. That's yeah. a pretty small orbit. That's pretty damn quick, too. Right. So you'd be like, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have your hairspray done properly then, otherwise your hair would be all over. You'd probably be dead anyway, because right. yeah. you know, there'd probably be no oxygen, and knowing you, you know, you're, if you give the space, you'll probably yeah, fart in it or something, and you know, blow yourself up because you know, you're pretty methane at times. You finished mumbling there? Yeah, sorry, keep okay. going, yeah. <laughs> The reason this phenomenon is possible is because there are two gravitational sweet spots called Lagrange points along a planetary body's orbit where another body can share the same orbit. These points are located six degrees ahead of and six degrees behind the the orbiting object. This even occurs within our solar system. A group of asteroids called Trojans inhabits the, the Lagrange points of Jupiter's orbit. The existence of this pair of planets also support an existing theory that the moon was formed by a collision of the Earth and a Mars-sized planet that once shared the same orbit. Well, I've got one for you. Have you? It's similar to our mate Squidgy. Okay, yeah. Squidgy the sex bot. No, that's your theory, not mine. No, okay, and, and no, you're the one who said it. <laughs> anyway. oh, no, you're carrying on with it. Okay, here we go. Psychic fired from for police job after sexually arousing during training. Say so what? Psychic fired from police job after sexual arousal during training. Mm. All right, we're getting into the naughty stuff yeah. now, which is called the naked naughtiness. Oh. Oh, new new show. We should actually do something like that, the naked naughtiness. Do like a an X-rated version, and we say the word bottom a lot. Bottom and bottom. spanking. And spanking. Spank yes. that monkey. Spank. Anyway, hey, you want to hear the story? 
Yeah, go on. Okay, go okay. On. Yeah, you seem all excited. Yeah. Uh, a spiritualist who claimed that he was fired as a police trainer because of his beliefs today lost an industrial tribunal. Greater Manchester Police said... Alan Prower, 62, was fired on the 24th of October, just three weeks after landing a job with the GMP as a law trainer. Although the force wrote to him, citing his current work in the psychic field as a reason for dismissal, a tribunal in Manchester today ruled against Mr Power. I'm sorry, is his name's Power and he's a psychic? Psychic power. Oh, that's weird. Too Powerful that, psychic. I reckon you just made that name up. I reckon you did too, yeah. Uh, referred to in the hearing as a ghostbuster. <laughs> he referred himself as a ghostbuster. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, tonight the force welcomed the decision that they did not have to discriminate against him on religious grounds, as Mr Power claimed. Assistant Chief Officer Julia Rogers said, GMP notes that fully supports the judge's ruling. This matter was never been about Mr Power's belief, and we uh, deny that any claim that it was discriminated against on of those or any of those other grounds. The GMP welcomes all races and religious employees and actually recruits people with a diverse beliefs from many different ethnic backgrounds. It was alleged that during one voluntary session as a trainer at Bruce Bruch Police Training College about uh, back in, oh, was way back in 2004, that he became sexually aroused. He was playing the part of a shoplifter being frisked when he got... Visibly excited, <laughs> it was said he denied the allegations. <laughs> oh, good. Anyway, the GMP's barrister Spencer King also said that Miss Power used his connections with student officers in a bid to see them out of work hours, <gasps> which was claimed he denied. The claimant denied, and he As also claimed do. that Mr. Power, who said he had also seen ghosts since childhood. Disputed inappropriate research material to Merryside officers featuring the World Trade Center attacks. So basically, Chuck got wood, while wood got chucked. That's very clever. Yes. I Did thought. you just think of that, or was it on the bottom? No, no, I just thought of it then. So oh, Chuck got mate. wood, and wood got chucked. <laughs> ten out of ten for that one. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I am quite. The crowd goes wild. Yes, I should try and it. Yeah, I <laughs> Believe it alone. Hey, guess what? You got one more story. I for got us one more quick one. Show. Awesome Wells. Yes. You know the War of the Worlds. The Worlds, guy who did the radio show. Yep. Everyone thought and, it was real. Uh, yep, yep. On the radio and how it freaked everyone out. Yep. Studies estimate that about six million people listen to that broadcast, and mm. that of that six million, about one point seven million believed it was true. And 1.2 million of those were really, truly frightened. Mm -hmm. Despite the relatively small audience that heard the broadcast, within the next month, they had approximately 12,500 newspaper articles about the show and its aftermath. Even Adolf Hitler said that the panic caused by the show was evidence of the decadence and corrupt condition of democracy. However, some say the panic caused by the show was not nearly as large spread as first thought. But th through the years, the rumours and gossip have tended to perpetrate the legend. After a public outcry, CBS promised to never use "We interrupt this program" in broadcasts for dramatic purposes, for dramatic purposes only. Despite the controversy surrounding the broadcast, it captured Orson Welles. It catapulted Orson Welles to great fame. Different versions of books and movies would follow. Years after the infamous broadcast. Just that's goes to show the power of the media. That's right. Hang on. Um, yes, Naked Zombie is awesome. 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 Yeah, we're not sending subliminal messages at all. No, no. But we really suck. Yeah. Anyway, that's it, mate. That's We've done it. tonight's show. Very good. I cannot thank you enough for coming into Zombies. We've got a few things to, to finish up on tonight, which is my little... I got on my soapbox tonight and I wore my cranky pants. No, so I, I, I'm, I'm up there with you, mate. We're at, uh, I'm not a scared. And, I'm not scared of <laughs> telling how it is. <laughs> going to get me in trouble one day. But who who get that? Yep. Anyway, don't forget, uh, if you've listened to the show, you must jump onto the Naked Zombie fan site and write. Yes. Hugs for Aaron. Hugs. Who? 
Aaron, Andrew, hugs for. I keep calling. You, you really do miss this guy. You, you, <laughs> hugs you know for, him well, don't you? Hugs for Andrew. 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 Hugs for Andrew. And so for Brad's cause, that is spelled A N D R E W. <laughs> Good one, Nomna. <laughs> uh, and also, don't forget to keep an eye out for the upcoming next couple of weeks. The shop. Also, something really cool is might be happening to me soon. It's in September, but I'm not allowed to say anything yet. So you'll have to wait for that. And Friday we're going on the yes. Haunts of Brisbane Haunts Walk. Haunts of Brisbane Tour Walk. Yes, we are. So if you yep. want to come and meet us. Uh, or the stone us. Or stone, yeah. Or, or, or not meet us. Not meet us, but just, just sit, go on the work and, and just poke us with sticks. We are going on, if you're a Brisbane listener, you will catch us at the, the Haunts of Brisbane. Dutton Park. Dutton Park Moonlight Tours Walk. So we will be there for that. This on the 24th, is it? Uh, yes. The 24th at Dutton Park Cemetery. Check all the details out in the Haunts of Brisbane, Brisbane website. Yeah, we Liam. will post that. Leon posts that. So don't forget, to, if you want to come and join us. I think us you've got a story up there too. Hey? You've got another story up there? Yeah, he has. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bricky fr- Creek yeah. Hotel? Yep, yep. yep. Absolutely, Brent. Also, looks like we have a couple of cool locations. You know how we talked about last week's show that yep. we're going to be going out and doing investigations and bringing it to the radio? Yes. Looks like it is happening. Looks like we've got a couple nutted down now, so we've just got to work out some dates, and we'll let you know when they are, where they are, as they happen, as they come through. Very good. And, of course, don't forget to um, send Andrew hugs. And yep. um, You got it right that time. Yeah, I did. I found it amazing. That's it's because you wrote it down. I did write it down. <laughs> I wrote it down on my arm. Oh. Oh, that's not my arm. Anyway, so you are listening to The Naked Weirdest. Not anymore, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've just switched off. <laughs> Uh, so we'd like to thank all our fantastic listeners and don't forget the shop's going to be opening up soon on Naked Zombie Radio website so you can buy yourself a cool short shirt and don't forget that the auction's coming up for that signed autograph shirt which is different again. Except I think that's about it. We've got to learn to write first so we can sign it. Yeah, that's right. That's, yeah, that's, we can read but we can't write. Right, yeah, you, you, you have trouble reading. Yeah, yeah well, I can't write. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So anything to close off tonight's show? What's it? If it's on the net, it must be true. And like I say each week on the Naked Zombie, have a good night, have a great night. If you're out investigating, don't touch each other where you shouldn't. It's naughty. Leave up the then, again, then again, if it's me, yeah, go for it. I don't care. <laughs> so have a good night, everyone, and we'll speak to you. Oh, there's a night show. Yes. Uh, the Naked Debate. Don't forget that. It's questions. Questions. Send us lots of questions for the Naked Debate. We want to answer your questions or, and have talked to you. Answers to our questions that we asked or yeah, anything they just, think just was right or wrong. Yep. Yeah, right or wrong, let us know. Get on the website and leave your details. Hey, we voluntarily we have to stop now. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight on the Naked Zombie and we will speak to you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>